Good morning, church. I hope you are doing uh, really well. Uh, and so um, I'm, I'm excited to be back here uh, in front of you again, uh, speaking here. We are at Webster Reservoir again this morning, and it is an absolutely beautiful morning. Uh, and so uh, Kate and I and our youngest son, Elliot, uh, our only child at the time, four years ago, we moved here to Kansas. And uh, it has been a whirlwind uh, since we moved here. Uh, in fact, since then, we've had a, a, another child, Elsie Grace. In fact, today is her birthday. And so uh, it has been uh, many life-changing experiences since we've been here in Kansas. But uh, when we moved from Virginia, we had a nice two-story home. And so uh, we had to pack up everything uh, and put it in a U-Haul and, and come to Kansas. And uh, when, we were, uh, when we were packing everything up, we went to the box store the first time and, and bought boxes. And we bought large boxes, big boxes. And uh, we just thought it would it'd be the smartest thing to do because, you know, you, the, the more stuff you put in a box the less trips you have to take back and forth, right? Uh, to the truck or into the house or out of the house. And so uh, we come home uh, and with large boxes and we started just packing things into the box. And uh, we put books and towels and blankets and everything we could into one box so we can, we can take it out. And after the first box was full, I, I tried to pick it up and I was like, whoa, man, we've got to rethink this. And so after some discussion back and forth, uh, we went back to the box store and uh, we decided to go with a different size box. And so uh, here is one of the boxes that we have just unpacked uh, in the last week uh, here. Uh, we've been here for four years and this is a box that, that we chose. Uh, and this is a medium box. And uh, uh, when you're choosing a box uh, to put things in, you have to ask, well, what am I putting in it? right? Because you don't want to put something small in a large box. That'd be a waste of space. But then again, you don't want to put something really large in a small box because it just doesn't make sense, right? It won't fit. And so when you're choosing the box, you have to ask yourself, what are you putting in the box? I like a medium box. I like it. I can get my arms around it. It's comfortable. Uh, the load that I put in this box, I, it, it's manageable. I can move it around. I can, I can fit it into uh, more spaces. Uh, I just like a medium box. And I wonder, this got me thinking. I wonder if we have put God in a medium-sized box. Some of us were handed a box. Some of us were handed a medium-sized box and said, here's God. He, he, he fits in this well. You can wrap your arms around him. You can, you can manage him. You can fit him in. Many of us were handed God in a box, a medium-sized box. And, and many of us accepted God in that box. But here is what we notice. Here's what we've realized. As we've gone through Scripture, we've been diving in every week. What we see is God doesn't do boxes. But we still manage to keep Him in a box. And we fit Him in. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you this morning, if your God fits in a box, then He's too small. If God fits in a box, then He's too small. If your God fits in a box, then it's inevitable that uh, you're going to live daily in stress and in fear. You're going to feel lots of pressure because your God is too small to help you. Your God isn't big enough to, to talk to about your problems. Your God isn't big enough to, to come through for you. And if you live your life with a God that fits inside of a box, then it's inevitable that your life is going to be mundane. It's going to be boring. It's going to be predictable because you don't have a God that is big enough to call you to challenge, to call you to risk. You don't have a God that is big enough to use you to have some kind of significant impact on your community or each other. If you have a God uh, that fits inside of a box, then what is going to happen is challenges that are, you are facing will feel like they're just overwhelming. Situations in life that you're going to, to have if your God fits inside of a box will feel hopeless. 
because your God's not going to be big enough to fix your problems or to bring you through whatever you're going through. So many times we put God in a box, and I hope that uh, this is true for you. It is for me. The more that uh, I read God's word, the deeper that I dig into his story, I'm finding out that God, he, the box that I have for him is, is too small. God doesn't fit in a box. We have all kinds of labels uh, for uh, these boxes, and some of these labels we've been given. Some of our labels are, Christian church God or Catholic God. Some of our boxes uh, that we've been handed say Lutheran or, or Baptist or community. Some of our labels that we have on our boxes read, God can't use me after what I've done. Some of our boxes are labeled, God doesn't work like that anymore. Some of our boxes are labeled, we've never done it like that before here at this church. Some of our boxes say, I don't have any special gifts. We have all kinds of ways of, of limiting God's power that he wants to demonstrate to us. And he wants to demonstrate those things to us for his glory. Man, and as we've been reading scripture week after week, we've been diving in. Man, we see one example after another of just how big God is. That's what the story is all about. That's what scripture is all about. It's about the bigness and the greatness, the glory of God. Man, we look at situations and we say, oh, it's too late. And God says, no, I'm about to do some of my best work. We look at people and we say, oh, no, they're too broken. And God says, watch how I'm going to put them back together. We look at a person that seems so insignificant and God looks at them and says, that's who I'm going to use. That's who I'm going to use to change everything. Man, I hope the more that we dig into to the story, I hope the more that we dig into scripture, man, I don't want us to get a bigger box. I don't want us to get a bigger box for God. I want us to get rid of the box altogether. Because what would happen if our concept of God changed? What would happen if our, our perspective of God changed? What could God do through his church? What could God do through us? Over and over again, we see where God and man's thinking are, are completely different because man put God in a box and God is thinking way bigger, so much higher than man does. This week, uh, we're in chapter 11 of the story. And uh, we're going to be diving into 1 Samuel chapter 16. So if you have your Bibles or your devices there in front of you, uh, will you take them out and, and turn to 1 Samuel chapter 16? This story uh, this week, uh, this scripture that we read uh, is all about David. Specifically, it's about David before he was king. And so uh, just a little context for those of you who are, are just jumping in uh, with us. So uh, last week, uh, we talked about Saul and how uh, we talked about how the Israelites, they wanted a king. They wanted to be like all the other nations around them. They wanted to have this powerful king that would lead them into battles that would help take care of their, all their problems. They, they wanted a king. And so God allowed the Israelite people to, uh, to have a king in his name. Was, was Saul. God told Samuel, uh, who th was the prophet at the time, to go and anoint Saul as king. And at first, man, Saul did really good. But as time went by, Saul got more and more greedy. Uh, Saul got uh, more and more uh, selfish. He did the opposite of what God wanted. And so God denied Saul the right to stay king. And so now here we are, uh, and God has chosen David as king, we're in 1 Samuel chapter 16, and uh, we read about David. And now, about this time, uh, as our story starts, David is only about 14 or 15 years old. He's young, and, and he is a shepherd. That means that, man, he spends his time watching sheep all day long, you know, as we read uh, scripture, we, we, we read uh, where David, he likes to practice, practice his slingshot. He's really good with his slingshot. Uh, not only that, but David likes to sing. 
this is how he spends his days. He's watching his sheep. He's, he's practicing slinging stones. He's singing songs. Man, but, but this day, uh, this day is, is very different in the, in the house of David. So God has told this prophet Samuel, go to the house of Jesse. Uh, that's David's dad. And he tells Saul, there you're going to appoint the next king of Israel. So uh, Jesse, uh, David's dad, knows that he's coming, knows that Samuel was coming, and he knows why he's coming. So he gets his seven sons together. He gets them all ready. He gets their, their resumes typed up. He gets them dressed all up, man, their hair slicked back, their nicest suits. They get ready for Samuel to come. And they get ready for, for Samuel to, to give them a good look. And so Samuel gets to the house and uh, the first and oldest son is Elam. And, and so Samuel is, is looking at him and uh, this Elam is, is, is strutting his stuff. And Samuel thinks, wow, this is it. In, first, in fact, if you look at 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 6, Samuel says, Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. He thinks, man, this is the one. But God says, no. You see, here's the thing. Samuel has seen a lot in his life. He's been through a lot, but he still has God in a box. He has in his mind, uh, here's the type of person that God is going to use. And he judges based on what he sees. But God says uh, in verse 7, he says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The, door, the Lord does not look at the things that people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. God looks at the heart, not what's, not what's on the outside. And so Samuel, he goes through six more sons, and it gets kind of awkward because he runs out of people to look at. He runs out of sons to, to, to check out, to, make the, to, to, to anoint as the next king. And finally, Samuel has to ask, hey, have you, is there someone else? And Jesse says, yeah, I have another son. But he's young. He's just a shepherd out in the field. And in fact, uh, the language here that, that, that Jesse uses for David is he calls him, he says, yeah, but he's the runt. <laughs> But so uh, Samuel says, no, I need to look at all your sons. And so they call David to come in. And as soon as he walks in the door, the Lord says, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 12, rise and anoint him. He is the one. And so David comes on the scene and he's anointed to be the next king of Israel. Man, and I think that we can stop right there. I think that the message of this week can be found in what we've just read and what we've just talked about. You see, God's anointing, He can use anybody. Anybody. We say, well, I I'm too old. Do you remember that the elderly infertile couple, Abraham and Sarah? Yeah, you remember those? God used those to build a nation. Some of us say, well, well I'm too broken. Well, do you remember Joseph talking about uh, his brother sold him and how broken his life was? Remember how God used him to sustain Israel? We say, well, our past is too stained. We, we've messed up too many times. Well, remember Rahab the prostitute who God used to, to hide the spies there in Jericho? We say, well, I'm, I'm too scared. I'm, 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 I'm too nervous. I have too much fear. And man, do you remember Gideon? Mighty warrior Gideon and his fear that he had? Hey, church, here's what I want to tell you. That, that we are God's anointed. Those of us who have accepted Jesus as, his, as our Lord and Savior, we are his anointed. We have been anointed with the Holy Spirit. And we don't need to keep that in a box and label it. Whatever we label it. We need to stop looking through our eyes and we need to start looking through God's because he is, he is bigger. His love has so much bigger plans for each and every one of you. 
The message this morning is, is easy. It's simple, but it's profound. Man, our lives are a mess. Even those people that, man, we idolize, we, they seem like they've got it all together, man. They've got uh, the perfect family. They've got the nicest cars. They've got a, a big house. They've got all this wealth coming in. Yeah, their, their life's a mess. That's why God, that's why God sent a Messiah into the world. He sent a Messiah into the world with a message. And he wants to tell us that our creator loves us. Our creator, the one that created the heavens and the earth, man, he is big. He don't belong in any box. In fact, he can't fit in any box. Our God is big. He's bigger than any cancer. He's bigger than any sickness, any, any virus. He's bigger than any addiction. He's bigger than any, any death that we can face. He's bigger than any of our desires. He's bigger than any of our broken relationships. He's bigger than our messes that we call life. He's bigger than all of that. And He loves us and He desires a relationship with you. He wants us to take him out of the box and let him and his power and his glory live and work in our lives. Man, today is a special day. We are celebrating Palm Sunday this morning, the triumphal entry. That's when uh, Jesus was coming into Jerusalem and, and people had palm branches and they were laying them down and they were laying down their coats on the, on the, on the road and they were saying, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Man, what a special day it is. What a day it is for us to, to take God out of the box. What a day it is to, to realize uh, just what God has done for us. Today, this morning, right now, if you have a God in a box that's labeled, I need to find him, or I need to do better, or I need to accept his love for me, maybe be baptized, then take him out of the box. Man, celebrate God and his bigness. Some of us uh, I've talked to uh, this week have, uh, in, in our discussions, you've talked about, man, I, I want to do something, but I just don't know what it is. And sometimes, man, that's okay. But I'm, I'm here to tell you, prepare yourself. Start preparing yourself. Start diving into Scripture more and more. Start praying. Start talking with God more and more and more. Because He's there. I mean, there's things to do. Even when, when we have been uh, ordered to, to stay at home, there's things that we can do. We can use this time to, to take God out of the box and start realizing just how big He is and and the will that he has for our lives. God desires a relationship with you, church. He, he desires a relationship with you, whoever's listening. This morning, realize that God can use you. He doesn't look, on, look at our outside appearances. He looks on what's on the inside. And he sees you for who you are. He says, I love you. Come as you are.